there are three primary ones, one additional one I'm going to add, and then the change of base formula. So uh, let's go right after that one I'm going to add. So first of all, this one's pretty straightforward, and maybe it's obvious, but uh, some folks don't recognize it. If I take the logarithm of base A, logarithm with base A, of the value A, that's going to equal 1. Now, why is that the case? Because if I put this in exponential form, remember that this was the guy that was the difficult thing to get all by itself. So I got 1. The base is A, so that's raised to the A. And then the, uh, the, thing all, the thing that's going to be all by itself when I convert back to exponential is A. So is that a true statement? A equals A to the 1? Well, yes. In fact, A to the 1 equals A to the 1. So uh, let's do a numerical so you can see that a little bit, possibly a little bit better. If I have base 3 of 3 is equal to 1, well, if I go to exponential form, that's 3 to the 1 equals 3. Is that a true statement? Yes. So this is always going to be true as well, as long as the base and the argument are the same, it's going to equal 1. All right? And so I'm going to make a little table off to the right. And so logarithm of base A of A is equal to 1. That's kind of your first uh, shortcut, if you want to think of it, or rule or property is what most people call it. Um, so then the other one is, uh, one of the standards is, uh, if I take a logarithm of some base with some base of a product that is equivalent or equal to the sum of the individual logarithms of the factors of that product. So it would be this. And so why is that the case? Well, there's a couple things to consider. First, I didn't talk about any of the, any of the other videos. So um, why, in fact, when I'm in exponential form, right, I have y equals, actually, that's not the form I'm using these days, right? I'm using this. x is equal to a to the y, right? Now, when I convert that to logarithmic form, the y is by itself, and I take the logarithm of this base, a, of the argument, the new argument, x. Okay? So what is y? y is an exponent. Well, what is y? Even though it doesn't look it, it is still an exponent. And in fact, a logarithm is in fact an exponent. And so part of why I'm not doing, this is not a formal proof in any way, shape, or form. Don't even think it's a proof. But in a sense, the, this is an exponent, and so the product of some numbers can be the sum of their exponents in some way. And so uh, this one in particular is related to this idea from our exponential shortcuts, not exponential, our shortcuts for exponents. So uh, x to the m times x to the n, that's a product of two numbers, is equal to x to the m plus n. Look, we're adding the exponents when we're multiplying the numbers. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite that guy over here in our little summary list. So what do we got? Logarithm a of a product is equal to the sum of the logarithms. Okay? Next one, division. So in a very similar manner, x divided by y is equal to, now here's the thing. When we had our shortcut, when we were dividing, we had x to the m over x to the n, and that was equal to x to the m minus n. So what do you think is going to happen here? Hopefully you said subtraction. So the quotient, the logarithm of a quotient, is equal to the difference of the logarithms. The logarithm of the quotient is equal to the difference of the logarithms. And so that's related to this guy, and we get this property. Okay? And this allows us to manipulate equations later so we can solve logarithmic exponential equations. And uh, I guess that's primarily their use. There are other uses, but that's primarily the reason we can manipulate equations algebraically, or some would say analytically. And so we get this guy in there. And so again, it's the logarithm of the quotient is equal to the difference of the logarithms. And then we got one more of these kind of straightforward properties. 
This one is the logarithm of an argument raised to an exponent is equal to the exponent times the logarithm. And this guy is actually related to this shortcut, uh, b to the m raised to the n. So when, I'm, when I have this exponent, I'm raising it to another exponent. Think about it. I'm, I have an exponent raising it to an exponent. Um, I multiply those guys. So here's an exponent being multiplied times another exponent. Okay, It's going to be b to the m times n. So an exponent being multiplied times another exponent. All right. Again, this is not these are none of these are formal proofs. They're simplistic just relationships. Uh, and so we got log base a of x raised to the r and it's equal to r times the logarithm base a of our original argument x. So this brings us to change of base formula. Okay, change of base. Very very handy because if you're requested to have a value for the logarithm, uh, sometimes the only way you're going to be able to do it is use change of base. There are some ways around it, but that to me is the easiest. I, I'm sure some some folks will disagree. So uh, actually, I know a couple that will disagree, but that's okay. Not a big deal. So uh, let's say I have some logarithm, and it has a base c, and I don't know. Let's say it's a x. And this base c, for instance, an example would be I have log base seven of 15. Now this 7 I cannot put into my calculator because my calculator can only have handle log base 10 or log base e which we don't write anymore we write natural log. Our calculator can only handle those two very easily and so this log base 7 is a pain in the butt especially if it's just saying hey tell me what that value is. So even if we change it over to uh, exponential form we get f uh, 15 equals base 7 to the y and because I, I don't know what that is clearly it's 7 7 squared is 49 so it's less than 2 and 7 raised to the 1 is equal to 7 so it's some value between 1 and 2 but I don't know is it 1.2 or is it 1.173 I don't know and so we can't put that in our calculator but we can put this in our calculator we can put this in our calculator log of whatever base I want, let's choose 10 of 15 divided by log base 10 of 7. So this is the old base that I didn't like. This is my original argument, the 15, and this is what base I, what I, what base I, I want to choose, whatever one I want to choose. And you could also have chosen natural log, of course, and it would be natural log 15 over natural log 7. Put that in your calculator and you'll get a value. That's not important what it is. And so how do we write that in symbolically up here for our summary? That would be the logarithm of whatever base you want, I'm going to put a b there, of x divided by the logarithm of whatever base you want that matches the top of the former base c. So that's called, that's the change of base formula. And I showed you a little bit how we would use that. And let's write it up here. So change o base. And so that's uh, log base c of x is equal to log base b of x over log base b of c. And so that should be it for this video, um, properties of logarithms. Thank you much.